nightshade here. I just happen to be in room 810 with Babette Bombshell. <laughs> the goddess of gore. Earlier, I just really, you know, I didn't expect you so soon. This is really. <laughs> but it's good to be here. It's good to have you here in my hotel room where so many have met pleasure that there's a little sign above the bed that says over a billion served. So, Babette, uh, I've heard through the grapevine that you are one of the biggest collectors of murder memorabilia, memorabilia blah, 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 in the world. So you want to tell us a little bit about that? Some others in Europe, and those Germans, they love that shit. They go right for it. But, uh, yeah, they're, in this country, I'm one of the biggest collectors of murderabilia, sideshow exhibits, and uh, paranormal artifacts and things like that. Probably the most famous, um, I have part of James Dean's death car. I have, um, let me see, what is that called? There's all of How did you get a part of James Dean's death car? Because that car supposedly disappeared and vanished. See, the thing about it, it ran into really poor management is what happened to poor James Dean's death car. Um, what happened was he got in this accident from the car, and then a promoter got hold of the car and sent it around to, like, bowling alleys and state fairs, and literally people would be, like, offered, you know, they pay a quarter to pull whatever they could off of the car and keep it. So, you know, they, people traveled around and did that for a few years, and then it was going back to L.A., and it mysteriously disappeared, and they've never seen it since. But while it was at a bowling alley, the manager the, the got on the steering column and pried off the little IZOD that actually says Porsche that's in the middle of the steering wheel. So that's the part that I have in my collection. And if you're going to have a part of the Porsche, that's the part to have. I mean, you know, that's the part that everybody wants to, wants to have. So yeah, I have a piece of James Dean. It's probably where his face smacked, actually, when it was in the accident. It's just kind of sad to think, but, you know, hey, his loss is my game. Um... There's that, that I have Albert Fisk's teeth, his dentures, which were bought from the warden in Sing Sing when he was executed. The warden kept them as a trophy in his desk. Well, kept them in, the, his, in his desk for a long time afterwards. And uh, I managed to get those when his estate sold. We're hearing a little ding a ling a ling noise and it happens to be the cell phone in my butt. That's fantastic. Well, that I have a very famous, the one that I get a lot of calls about that people are aware of are the Collier De is the Collier Death Chair. And uh, the Collier brothers were very famous guys in the 1920s who uh, hoarded, even now, when police come to your house and when the firemen come to your house, they'll say, we have a Collier situation, which basically means that you're a hoarder and your house is full of shit. And, they, you know, they can't get in the door. So uh, the Collier brothers collected a lot of stuff in the 1920s and 30s, so much so that it piled up, and one of the brothers um, had some kind of fucking disease. I don't know what he had. But uh, one of the brothers had, I think it was Langley, Homer. Homer was the one who died, and he was blind and uh, had a disease where his legs, he, he was uh, not, he was fucked. So basically he lived in one chair, okay? He lived in a chair and his other brother just like waited on him all the time. And his brother was a crazy, collected all the shit and created booby traps in the house because he was afraid people would break in, okay? Steal his shit. Yeah, exactly, because hoarders love their shit. So, exactly. So, you know, so he created all these booby traps and stuff in the house to, to kill like burglars and stuff in New York City and he was caught in one of his own traps and it crushed him to death as he was bringing his blind paraplegic like his brother couldn't walk at all or anything it, it, so he was I'm talking oh there's other people here that I'm not ignoring you dear viewer at home <laughs> I love a crowd so anyway so yeah so his brother was like bringing him like food and a whole load of shit fell on him in a booby trap and killed him, squished him less than 10 feet from his brother. So his brother was stuck there? In the stuck room. in the chair. No, he was in a normal, like, you know, like a chair, like, you know, a, a wing oh. back, wing back. So his brother died of starvation, knowing that his brother, who usually waited on him, was only 10 feet away, crushed to death, and just lingered and died in this chair. And since then, it went to Hubert's Dime Museum in New York City in Manhattan and was on exhibit with a sideshow freaks and like Lionel the Blind Face Boy and things like that. And uh, then it got into private collector's hands, but people have died who owned it. Like one guy in Australia died. A lot of people have died. So there's a curse on this chair 
And in eighty, in the eighties, in the mid eighties, I, I I saw it was for sale, and I was like, oh my god, I really got the itch. <laughs> you know? And there are a few other collectors of weird shit that I like. Really, this was before eBay. eBay fucked it all up. I mean, everybody can buy anything on eBay now. But uh, yeah. So anyway, so I bought that, and that's in the collection. And I don't sit in it, but you know, you're welcome. To so you have this chair in your home. Yeah, well, it's a little moth-eaten. I, there's a few different reasons why I won't sit in it. I won't sit in it for the same reason I won't sit in wicker. Yeah, because, you know, plus size goddesses and wicker and cursed chairs don't mix. So, right, I'll go right through it. But that's the collecting anyway, so. Very cool. Now, Babette, what have you been doing lately? What's your, what's, what's the newest project? Well, aside, besides what you saw earlier, which you gotta do to make the ends meet, um, I... Well, I, I did uh, Herschel Gordon Lewis's film, The Uh Oh Show. I did, which it, Herschel was fabulous. I mean, you, oh you really, uh, I fucking love her. <laughs> I, I showed up on Herschel's set the first day, and I had been connected to that project because it was originally called Grim Fairy Tale. Right. And it had, 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 had hopscotched around Hollywood for a long time, and a lot of people had signed on to this project to try to get this fucking this sucker made. So, and it just wasn't happening. In the first version of the script, I was going to be a female motorcycle cop, right? And we know, and if you've seen the movie, it's changed a lot, okay? So uh, so the, that was the first time I was signed on to the project with Herschel, was to play this female motorcycle cop. And then the script morphed and changed, and I saw that he was doing the project again. So I, I emailed him, and I was like, Herschel, did you forget me? <laughs> And he said, no, come on down. So the day before I shot, literally the day before, he said, come down. We need to have you involved in the project. So I came down and uh, never had met him in person. He's wonderful. And he had only seen the pictures of me, which, admittedly, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's, that's why I got, you so know. he I, wasn't surprised. Yeah, he was. Well, he was a little agog. <laughs> you know he loved you. Yeah, he, when he saw me, he, he, was like, he was like, in a word, don't change anything. Because right. I was dressed like a hooker, you know, which comes natural. I had the wardrobe. And that's the part that, you got. Yeah, that was the part I got. So. Were you farting before you get in the car? Uh, well, you know, you gotta, you gotta, it doesn't run on methane. But, uh, Do you so, know that uh, Sid and Emma were also in the Uh-Oh Show? Oh, Sid and Emma doing the Uh-Oh Show thing. Yeah. It was a great it was a great opportunity, great film, I hope. I haven't seen it. You know, and I went back and shot pickups for that where I was in a kitchen and they wanted me to tongue kiss a poodle and I saw this really <laughs> whacked. I did it. I mean, I'll do it. Pay the bills. Pay. You can't sign the check. I'll fucking kiss a poodle. So they had me in this pink kitchen with this little pink poodle and the poodle didn't want to kiss me. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> they smeared peanut butter on my face. They smeared ham salad on my face. <laughs> that poodle didn't want any part of my face. <laughs> and I was just like, come on. The dog would not work with it. It wouldn't lick my face. That's dog will lick its ass, but it won't lick my face. So... So happy, so be it. Well, Babette, I want to thank you so much for letting us into your bedroom. So much for coming. Sorry we really caught you, up, you know, before you were ready for us, you well, know. But I'm always ready for you, dear. Oh, thank you. And uh, so check out These Ghoulish Things Remind Me of You, and when the video's up, I'll let you know. Oh, please do. Yeah. I'll be racked with anticipation. Okay. Mm -hmm. ah! Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> ah!